As technology has evolved, so has filmmaking equipment. And when you think of drones, there's only one company that anyone has heard of because they absolutely dominate the market. DJI, which in Chinese stands for Great Frontier Innovation, but is also an acronym for Dejiang Innovations, controls 72% of the global drone market. Founded by Frank Wang in 2006, DJI has become known for its commitment to innovation, which has seen it become popular worldwide among casual and commercial users. But what is the story of DJI and how have they dominated an industry to reach a $21 billion valuation? Here's how it happened. Wang founded the company from his dorm room at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology in 2006 after deciding to follow his fascination of UAVs. Once he graduated, using the money he had left from his scholarship, he moved the business to Shenzhen, known as a bit of a manufacturing metropolis and China's Silicon Valley. Despite Wang's hard work and effort, the first DJI drone wouldn't be released until 2013, and when it did, it was more of a DIY machine compared to the self-flying masterpieces we can buy today. The Phantom 1 was the first machine to be released, and whilst it had an internal GPS system for stable flight, it could only stay airborne for 10 minutes and didn't even come with a camera, forcing users to strap a GoPro to record what was shaky footage at best. Whilst the Phantom 1 was fairly basic, the GPS element meant that users could maintain the aircraft's position, effectively hovering in place which made the drones safer, easier to fly, and more reliable. It's interesting to think that in just seven years, they went from shaky footage to best in class. But this all came from the ethos and mindset of quality and innovation, and being based in the manufacturing capital meant that they could create software and hardware that helped to boost them far ahead of their competitors. Another of their innovations was the Lightbridge transmission system that allowed the live footage to be streamed in HD quality direct to your smartphone, which again evidently helped you to fly the thing in the first place as you can actually see where you're going. They also design software that helps you understand if there's a problem with your drone, like a self-diagnosis software. All these innovations have seen the firm become the biggest and best in the industry, valued at over $20 billion with annual sales of over $2 billion. As the firm continued to innovate, they introduced a wide variety of drones, both for the casual user in the Phantom 2, 3 and 4, the foldable Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air, the Spark, every one better than the last, some lighter, some faster, some with longer flight times, better cameras, and different features to make the drones more tailored to their target market. They've now expanded to produce more products too, from the Osmo Pocket, the Ronin Gimbals, the Robomaster Educational Robot, their goggle system, and much more to entice their retail customer base into buying the perfect tool to get the perfect shot. As they expanded into commercial sectors, the Matrix was designed for industrial inspections and construction sites, and the Inspire for film and TV studios. And despite having what can only be described as a fleet of drones, DJI have also branched out to release cameras and gimbal systems, all combining the two through the Osmo series. It's even seen DJI acquire the Hasselblad camera company in 2017 to further research and understand photography technology, with DJI Mavic 2 Pro featuring a Hasselblad camera in 2018. The reason for this is because of their innovative nature, but also because more recently they've expanded into commercial equipment that's being used by both businesses and the Chinese government. Whilst useful for businesses to access unreachable locations, their business with the government has created some awkward situations. Like when they agreed to provide the authorities in Xinjiang with drones to monitor the Uyghurs without them knowing. And it has also seen the Chinese government demand an air traffic registry to ensure they can monitor and identify who is flying the drones in China after a near miss between a military fighter plane and a drone that was flying at an altitude of 4 miles in the air. Whilst Wang wasn't exactly keen to provide this, he felt it was better for DJI to make it rather than the government. This has caused concern in the US with some of their federal agencies stopping using the DJI products due to security fears, but DJI has promised that no data or information is shared with the Chinese officials. 
In a bid to improve their reputation, DJI has also created a geofencing software that doesn't allow the drones to fly within certain areas, like prisons or airports. Whilst drones provide amazing footage for filmmaking, they have been used negatively before, with some terrorist organizations even strapping explosives to DJI drones to target people across Iraq, Syria and Venezuela, hence why DJI had to design and set up their own geofencing and geolocation service. Whilst DJI and Wang may not have invented drone technology, they have revolutionized it and are now considered to be the world leaders who dominate the market. Their constant innovation has opened the drone market up to beginners and professionals alike, and now, according to Bloomberg Businessweek, their dominance may be hitting limited or even negative returns. Being located in the manufacturing hub of Shenzhen has helped to perfect the manufacturing process, with automated assembly which even sees the drones test fly themselves while still being made. Gartner predicted that the drone market would be worth over $11 billion in 2020, with DJI dominating that market. And whilst an IPO for the business has been rumoured since 2018, it still remains a private company, which has seen Wang discreetly accumulate a net worth of around $5 billion. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.